Okay, so I'm just going to run you through the induction PowerPoint and the procedures for when you come to conference on the first morning. So, first thing to do is to come to Lockside Reception, pick up your tutor pack, which will have copies of all of the necessary handouts and resources, your register, etc. You are also welcome to bring subject-specific props to place in your classroom or stick up on the walls if you want to. But let us know ahead of time if you want anything specific that's extra to the kind of standard. You'll also be given a key to your classroom. Do remember to bring it back at the end along with your completed register. That's important for our records. Um, but we will be coming round early on on the first day just to check that you're okay with your computer, you've got everything you need and so on. Uh, when you get there and you want to start the computer up, you can just use your usual university login, the one that you use for UniLearn, to get the computer up and running so that you can project from it. Remember, you might very well be nervous. They're going to be terrified, very many of them. So do give them a warm, confident welcome as they arrive. Most of them are really nervous. And try to get them conversing with one another um, because some may know each other, but often they don't. So what I've found in going round groups on the first morning is that I go into some rooms and there's a buzz and people are chatting. It's quite exciting and relaxed. And I go into others and it's kind of... Mm, a little bit quiet, a little bit uncomfortable, tumbleweed blowing through, people feeling nervous. So if you can try just to get a little bit of liveliness, a sort of friendly environment, it's all standard stuff. I'm sure I'm preaching to the converted. Also remember to tick them off the register as they arrive and get them to add in an in case of emergency contact for their loved ones in case we need to reach them, God forbid. Also, perhaps get them to fill in their alternative email addresses. Very soon they'll cease to be students of the University of Huddersfield and lose their Unimail account. And therefore, it'd be lovely for networking opportunities if we also have an alternative email address. And once you've done all of that, you're ready to start your induction PowerPoint. So, first things first, emergency health and safety. Um, the 222 number is the... Um, Campus supports, so that's an important number. They can get it from a mobile phone, they can use an internal phone, or they can just pick up a red phone in receptions. Point out to them where the fire exits are and the fire assembly point um, at when, once they've gone out of the exit. Explain that if there is a fire evacuation, they should follow you to the fire assembly point and wait for further instructions. But if they're on a break and they're not with you, they should make their way straight to the fire evacuation point and try to find their group. Also, you'll want to point out, of course, where the nearest toilets are at, at, at that stage, I guess. The ethos, a good idea to set the scene by outlining the ethos of the conference in terms of hearing and valuing the opinions of others, confidentiality, anything that's shared about particular institutions, and mutual support. Also, please stress the idea that the conference is an opportunity to develop their confidence and familiarity with writing and delivering a paper in this kind of forum. And it has been included in the curriculum as a way to foster and support specialist networks. So to encourage them to participate in future events of this kind, it, which is a, an excellent form of CPD. So hopefully this event will give them the confidence and competence to do that in the future and more widely. Emphasize also that one of the key benefits of networking with other specialists in this forum is that they can write about that in their reflective journal and also in their professionalism assignment that's coming up soon. And there's a lovely reflective log at the back of their handbook that, that, that they can use to capture their ideas that might feed into these important assessment tasks that are coming up in the near future. Also say to them, make it clear to them that we have endeavoured to provide support where it's been requested or where we are aware of a need, but to welcome them to let you know at the first available opportunity if they need any further adjustments to the materials or the arrangements because we're really anxious to make sure that everything is entirely accessible to all participants. You'll then go through the timetable with them and of course they'll be on one of these two timetables which are in the handbook so I'll point out to them which one they're following so they get a, a feel for how the, the two days is going to pan out um, and then stress this idea about attendance that it's vital that they attend that you need to register that everybody's attended so that they can meet outcome A6 for the module and get their certificate at the end of the two days without which of course their 30 credits for the specialist module is in jeopardy so they need to make sure that if they need to leave early if at all possible let you know beforehand complete an early leavers form if not as soon as possible afterwards 
Okay, so induction PowerPoint part two. Um, after you've let them know and made it clear about the attendance requirements, you can then move on and um, tell them the protocol for the presentation. So 15 minutes for presentations, five minutes for questions and discussion, five minutes for people to jot down feedback um, to each other, five minutes for turnaround for the next presentation, swapping USB, getting PowerPoints loaded and so on. And also pointing out to them the arrangements for sticking to time. All of the students must be provided with an equal opportunity to present and be heard by colleagues. So advise them really clearly that it's important they keep to those timings and that you'll signal with a one minute to go sign and a please finish sign that everybody needs to stick to to make sure they're not eating into somebody else's time. Point out also the space for reflection in the trainee handbook perhaps at this stage because for each presentation they can jot something down that's going to jog their memory and help them to reflect more fully on the event afterwards. So that's a useful point to, to, uh, to remind them of that. Um, they will be given feedback by you as the tutor and you might at this stage want to share with them the feedback form that, that you're going to use and explain to them the way in which that will work. Um, and also that they will be getting peer feedback and the idea of the, the peer feedback is shaped around this kind of wow and now prompt. So I encourage your trainees to provide really useful, qualitative, constructive feedback by identifying why or how at least two aspects of the presentation were wow and one suggestion about something that could be improved if, if um, even further. So, and, and now you might consider also looking at blah, blah, blah. Um, each trainee can then reflect on this peer feedback as part of their self-evaluation and they might draw on those reflections when writing up their reflective journal back at their centre. And it's useful also to emphasise to trainees that they can draw on the tutor and peer feedback when completing their self-assessment. Um, so that can be really useful for them. And they can use tutor feedback as evidence of addressing learning outcomes for the module. So the sorts of examples of things that people might say, you're really clear when linking theory to practice when you, so try and get them to be specific. When you used your visual model to explain blah, it was really effective in highlighting the level of student engagement. I'm going to try that. So that would be lovely evidence of inspiring and engaging your audience, which is part of the ETF standards which they need to claim. And you gave a balance of your argument by identifying the challenges of blah, blah, blah. So those are the wow sorts of things. Now things that you could share with them. Examples of your student voices coming through were great. Even more would strengthen the impact. I really wanted to hear the end when you ran out of time. Condensing some of the beginning might have given you more time later. I do something similar to this. Have you tried or read blah, blah, blah. So constructive, friendly, supportive. Um, developmental feedback and they're all hopefully now experts in that of course because they're all trained teachers or nearly nearly at the end of their teacher training course. Useful map you can point out to them where they are you can point out to them at this stage where the catering is and we will tell each of you which of the catering outlets we'd like to send like you to send your students to really important this because last year all of the hot food sold out in the Lockside building because everybody went there and there was extra left over at Student Central so we've liaised with catering really closely to try to spread the burden and we did get some really disgruntled students last year who said it was appalling that they couldn't get hot food and, and that was all because too many people had gone to one of the outlets so if you can try to get them to stick to the outlet that we've advised you of that would be really helpful and this is a useful point at which to point that out to them. Point out to them also that on top of the timetable that you've shared with them and at the end of the first day they'll see uh, an optional enrichment lecture on behaviour management that's always gone down really well and the people who have attended it have said it's been really useful and productive and that's with Steve Baker who is a behaviour consultant and it's on the Monday at 5.10pm in the um, business school lecture theatre BS 101. They might be interested in taking a higher qualification. They can go along on the Tuesday morning to find out about that. We'll tell you the rooms near the time they've not yet been booked. And also you can point out to them opportunities for networking through social media. So we've got a hashtag for the event, which is hash hood NQT chat. And the reason why we've chosen that is that it will be used throughout their NQT year for regular weekly chats on a Thursday evening from 7 till 7.30. Now, I'm noting that I'm running out of time on this, so I'm going to do uh, a sequel. 
Okay, the third and final instalment, I hope, of the uh, induction PowerPoint introduction. So as I was saying, for Twitter followers, the, the tag for the event, hash HUD MQT chat. And please explain that this hashtag is for the event, but also for continued networking after the event and throughout the next academic year. So there will be a weekly half hour chat on that hashtag. Uh, each one dealing with a particular theme that's relevant to NQTs and that will be facilitated by Mike James who is the NQT support manager and all they need to do if they're not regular Twitter users they don't know how to do it is to create an account and log into Twitter at that time and search for the characters hash hood NQT chat and it will bring up any tweets that have that string of characters within them and they can also if they want to start joining in with that use that string of characters themselves in in their tweets in order to contribute to that so it's another way of engaging in some online social media CPD they can also follow Mike on Twitter because he has an account which is at NQT support and that will be used for regular updates on events at the university support opportunities available to them throughout their first year as a qualified teacher we're also asking you and it's a good point at which to point this out to them at the end of the second day to ask them to think about what they feel they will need in that first year of teaching what do they want to continue to develop after they finish the course in what ways can we help them as NQTs on an ongoing basis so it might be that they've got ideas for events that there are particular speakers that they'd like us to get in that there are particular platforms that we could use in order to help them that they might wish to be observed or have seminars with a teacher educator going forward those sorts of things so try to to get that capture it in some way either through recording it um, in audio or uh, noting down or creating a mind map of the sorts of things they want we really want to help them as much as we possibly can as they go into that second year not least of course because Ofsted will talk to them in the year that follows on from their inspection so they'll come back in September talk to NQTs we want to make sure we're supporting them in the best possible way and in the ways that they want so that's something that you uh, that we're asking you to do as part of your plenary okay at that point then you can open it out to any questions that they might have um, and of course you can deal with those as they come up uh, but it's at this point that you might want to introduce the idea of thinking circles uh, which is going to be part of the tutor planning day but also there are some resources about thinking environments thinking circles on UniLearn for you to have a look at and this is a way of trying to encourage that supportive developmental um, inclusive ethos that we mentioned right at the start of this presentation so uh, at, at this point it would be a good idea to introduce the notion of a thinking circle and perhaps implement a thinking circle if that's the way that you want to do it and of course different specialist groups might use different strategies for engaging their students in that kind of discussion so it's just one idea for you to use if you want to but that's about it really the next thing that you do of course will be to get into launch into if I can get back to it the whoops there we are the timetable so at that point you will have finished your introduction from your tutor and you can get on with your presentations and dialogue and, uh, and so on whether you're following timetable one or timetable two so um, good luck with it if there are any questions about this PowerPoint post them on Yammer it's really useful if you post them there in that shared environment because it's a good way of sharing uh, answers to those questions crowdsourcing ideas uh, and we think that's really helpful and developmental for everybody so do ask away if you've got any further questions about the conference itself and how it runs